Crescent's been drinking all night. She can't come pick you up. Paige asks Brooklyn. Oh, Paige says that Brooklyn sounded fine. She was just tired and ready to be home. Brooklyn then calls her ex-boyfriend, Jared, to come get her. He plans to pick her up after work at 7 a.m., so she still has a couple of hours before anybody can come pick her up. At 4.26 a.m., Brooklyn texts her ex, um, in repetition. Like, she texts, can you hurry? Please hurry. And I'm scared. Like, in succession. That was at 4.30 a.m. At 5.30 a.m., the ex gets his last text from Brooklyn saying, Never mind, I'm okay, I'm going to a party in Rock Castle County. So just a huge shift. Yeah, so she went from, I'm scared, please come and get me, to, I'm fine, I'm gonna go to another party. So that's a red flag. Yeah, okay. super sus, right? So, at... So... After she says that, he responds by asking who she's going with, but she doesn't ever respond, and she hasn't responded to this day, obviously. Um, at 7 a.m., Josh calls the fire department to report a fire inside of his home. He says that he went out to check on some horses and that Brooklyn was there when it started. Is this the ex-boyfriend or the guy that kidnapped her? This is Josh, the one that took her home for the okay. party. Okay. So he calls the fire department at 7 a.m and says that there's been a fire at his house and kind of like implies that Brooklyn started it okay. started the fire then at 2pm Brooke doesn't show up to a car show she was meant to be at in Somerset, Kentucky so I think it was like her cousins or her sisters were going to this car show with her she was supposed to be there at 2pm that day she does not show up Never show up. Um, they couldn't reach her phone and they ended up calling sister around 2 p.m. Tasha, one of her other sisters, then calls Josh. He says that he felt uncomfortable with Brooke and left her to put the horses away, but overheard her talking about going to a party in Castle Rock County. So, still really sus. About 20 minutes later, Josh calls Tasha back and says that he's scared that Brooke started a fire with a cigarette. This is the next day, Sunday. June 23rd, 2013. Brooklyn's mom, Shelby, files a missing person report after 24 hours because nobody still has seen Brooke. The family and friends then go over to Josh's house to look for her, and they end up finding her belongings like her purse, her wallet, extra clothes, her shoes, all on the front porch of his house. Um, but the clothes she was wearing that day and her phone are missing. Tuesday, June 25th, 2013, Brooklyn's phone beings for the last time on a tower in Blue Lick. An extensive search is then held over 16,000 acres with dogs and everything and nothing is found. On Friday, September 13th, 2013, a reward of $2,000 is offered for leads to find Brooke and they offer this money by doing this big fundraiser selling food, selling t-shirts, trying to raise as much money as they can to raise try to awareness also. Yeah. To try to get a reward for somebody to find her. Then on Tuesday, September 17th, 2013, they put up two billboards in Richmond and Jessamine County to help raise awareness and encourage tips from the everybody. Locals. Yeah. Friday, May 16th, 2014, a new billboard is installed and the reward amount is increased. Then, Sunday, June 22nd, 2014, there's a benefit held and the reward is increased to $14,000. Brooke's family holds a public benefit with music, raffles, and food to raise money for the reward. And this is a statement that I found. Um, it said the $14,000 reward offered for information leading to the return of Brooklyn Farthing or capture and conviction of those responsible for her disappearance. If multiple persons provide information deemed credible, then the reward shall be divided among them. So that's still active. So there's still an active reward out to help for information leading to the case. Yeah, leading to her being found. So this is possibly unrelated, but an interesting tidbit. On Wednesday, August 5th, 2020, Josh Hensley, the boy who took her home, is arrested on charges related to child sexual abuse. Just interesting. Then, this is the last we have on the case. Sunday, December 5th, 2021, Brooklyn's case is listed in Datelines Missing in America's online article and still is to this day. And that is the case of Brooklyn Farthing. It's kind of a short and sweet one. It is. Um, 
obviously they want to make sure to keep, you know, people active and going with the case, and that's, you know, what we're trying to do to make sure we get as much attention to it too, but I don't know, it seems really sketchy, the fire starting out, you know, yeah. her kind of being blamed for it, it seems like... There was like, no electricity in the house. Where did the fire come from? Yeah, and I don't know, was she an avid smoker? You know, was he an avid smoker? Those are the questions that... You know, I'm kind of wondering as just a person hearing the story is, you know, have they looked into that, you know, all these little details. Yeah, so Josh's story is that she started a fire in his house and then decided to leave and go to a party in another county. So, you know, again, if she was smoking, then maybe she could have just thrown it out. He could have, you know, said that she just threw a cigarette out if, she, if he knew she smoked to kind of frame it, if he had killed her or you know, I don't even know if that's really on the on the list. But yeah, but wouldn't they have found human remains still if, if there was a fire? So if all her belongings were out up front, and we know that there was a fire started and that she's missing, it just kind of seems like to put together, kind of like what you would do if you did kill somebody. You would want to make it seem like they there was just, an accident. Yeah, or they ran away or something. So. The, one of the biggest theories that are out there is that she was at his house, right? We know that for sure. Right. He took her to his house. Right. She got freaked uh, out. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she got freaked out, decides to up and leave, and then dies of exposure in the woods because these woods outside of his house are far-reaching. They're dangerous. It's not somewhere that you want to get stuck. Right. And if she was out there all on her own, didn't have any extra... So she could have maybe found an opening, a time to run, get out of there, whatever. She obviously was freaked out. Enough to be, you know, reaching Texting out to her ex. To, you know, Which is another out. thing, like, I don't know about you, I'm not calling my ex to come get me, even if I'm dying, bitch. Well, it, yeah, it seems like the tone, the shift right after that, you know, like if it's you were sending, if you were sending so text. many messages that you were distraught and like, even if things were okay, you would send a couple more messages like, hey, I'm so sorry, you're freaked also, out. You know, that how was, yeah. sad is it that she's trying to contact her cousin, her sister, her ex, anybody to come pick her up, and nobody comes and gets her? No. I'm sorry, but if it was me, I have at least one friend that would be like, you're freaked out, I'm coming to get you right now. And you know, it's hard because, you know, we don't know those relations, we don't know, like, you know, Maybe she did reach out. Maybe people were busy, you know, maybe. Um, it was the early morning hours. It was. And so a lot of people were probably just dead asleep. You said it was around 4, 21 a.m. You know, there's not a lot of people up at that time. Even yeah. people who could help, you know. I just don't understand, like, she calls her sister and her cousin. Why can't her sister come get her? Because she failed her driver's test. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like it's really sad to me. Like, given all the information, this is all the information that we have. Nobody came and helped this girl. Nobody helped Brooklyn when she needed it the most, and that's what's the saddest part. Yeah. Everybody should have somebody that can come get them at all times, you know? Yeah. And fuck this Josh guy. He's sketchy as fuck. I don't, I mean, who knows if maybe him getting arrested on other things will make Child him, abuse charges. It might make him barter a deal for a confession as terrible as that sounds you know like maybe he will that was in 2020 so maybe if we can get any more updates or keep up on that we'll definitely keep up and update you guys on anything that we find out really this is all the active information right and as new stuff comes up or if we get something that out we'll definitely just re-up and see what we got yeah a lot of people have talked about this case throughout time. There's a lot of YouTube videos out there. I'll link some down below if you want to dive more into the case. But so far, this is the timeline that we have and all the information that the family has. And it's just really fucking sad because I think the best outcome is probably that she died of exposure. Um, hopefully she wasn't assaulted by Josh, you know? Yeah, honestly... You know, for the friends and the family, we don't want to diminish that hope. You know, we want to, you know, we hope that she's still out there. Hope that, you know. But it's very likely that she tried to run away. Yeah. So, you know, like I, I said, don't think she went to a party in another <coughs> county. I mean, doesn't that sound sus to say you're going to a party in an entire county? Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, our counties are, 
you know, some people live on the on the border of a county, maybe, you know, it could be just like a drive over, but either way it is it just seems kinda weird and just right after she texts like, I need help, come get me to be like, just kidding, I'm gonna go to a party. Right. And just the tone shift, it just seems like someone who would have taken over after they killed somebody and just said, Oh no. Never I'm mind, okay. I'm okay. I'm going to a party in Castle Rock County. Right. That seems like something that Josh would type on her phone. And so, really, I think my help for this would be, or my hope for this would be that if anybody around that time in 2013 was around the area, knew people who lived in the area, maybe somebody knows something. It's definitely worth, if you've lived around those areas. If you're from the Kentucky area. From the Kentucky area during that time. Specifically, Bria, Bria County, Bria, or Bria Kentucky. In Kentucky. Um, you know, who knows, this might make it out there. It might make it to somebody who knows somebody who might know something, so. Um, if, yeah, if you were in that area in June of 2013, you could possibly help crack open this case. And... Not that it really is about the money, but if there is still an active reward, there's just more incentive to be a good person. So it's definitely uh, hoping this reaches those people in the right audience. I just can't believe that's all the information that we have. Like, they didn't find anything else. They didn't find a trace of blood. They didn't find her any remains, nothing. Like, she completely disappeared. disappeared. So maybe to your case, if or to what you were saying, if she did die of exposure in the woods, then she might have made it out there pretty good, in a pretty good way. Yeah. Before she just, you know. Something could, happened. Yeah, something happened. Couldn't make it, you know, what have you. So. I think the area, too, they could talk about it being very hilly, and you right. can easily get lost. Right. And out in the wilderness, I mean. You think you can make it, and then you get out there, and you're like, right. this is a lot. I don't know how to survive. And also with, you know, a human body from the aerial view in the woods, you know, you're just hiding under a rock if you're, like, scared and trying to take shelter, like, you're not going to get seen. So, um, you know, if anyone hikes in that area, I don't know, that might be a little traumatizing, but, you know, if anyone's up and around that area hiking, too, you know. Look out. Be on the lookout, just in case, you know. I know we mentioned, you know, clothing that she was wearing. Yeah. The last time she was seen, she was wearing... The gray Future Farmers of America FFA shirt. FFA is Future Farmers of America, for those who don't know. Um, so that blue denim Light blue shirts. shirts. Yeah. Yeah, so... I, I think know. that was great. I think... Um, is it <clears throat> sad that that's all that we have? It's sad because it is a more modern case, and normally anything after 2000s, I just assume it is just like... That you, know, you can just figure it out. Shit. You just yeah. get on there and just... just Fingerprints. Just, yeah, right. Something. But I guess, honestly, 2013, looking at it, was still a little bit back towards And I think now... There's more technology. Now there's a little bit more, but... Um, I just can't believe that Josh, like, doesn't have any other information to give people. Like, he's, he's just like, she started a fire, and I don't know. Well, and then... You know, I'm just kind of wondering how many times has he been questioned? You know, what has he been questioned about? Um, is it a cover-up? Is it a cover-up? You know, where where are they with him on this? So, and I'm sure a lot of that has taken a backseat to his current charge, which I'm, I, you know, who knows what that, what all that's going to turn out. But sus. It's pretty, it's pretty unfortunate and pretty sus. Yeah, I think... Do like? Do you feel like if she wouldn't have taken a ride home with him, that she would still be alive today, <sighs> or not missing? Unfortunately, I think so, and I think it's really hard in that situation because you, you know, we've all been in that spot where a friend wants to stay a little bit longer, and you yeah, know, um, you still want to party. You still want to party, but I think the main thing is you just you have to be careful going out. You can't. You just can't trust random people out. You have to have good support around you, yeah. especially if you're out drinking with people that you don't know. If you're out drinking, just vulnerable. You gotta make sure you got somebody, like Shelp said, you gotta have somebody in your back pocket that will always have your back. Text somebody if you go out. Or, honestly, me and my friends, we share our location with each other. And if I'm ever doing anything sketchy, which I don't do anymore, I used to, like, just text Alyssa and be like, hey, you have my location. I'm going to go drinking by myself. Will you watch out for me? Yeah. No, I don't recommend doing that, but I'm just saying. Right. Big disclaimer, don't go out drinking <laughs> by yourself, guy, girl, any, don't do it. It's just not, it's just not safe. You're looking for 
for danger and trouble. Okay, so lastly, I do want to say, if you do happen to have any information, they recommend to call the Kentucky State Police at 859-623-2404, and that's the, like, official line that you need to call if you do happen to know anything at all about this case. Um, also, we'd love to hear from you in the comments if you know anything else that we didn't mention. If we're missing any key elements, please let us know. We'd love to continue to discuss this case and just keep it open for the family, just that they have a little bit of hope that she could possibly return home. You never know. I mean, who's that one girl who they found like 10 years later? Elizabeth Smart. Yeah, you never know. And they found her on the street 10 years after she went missing, so. So, and like you said, she could, she could have met some mountain people out there who are just She could have got there. taken. She you could know. have been human trafficked. Yeah. There's a lot of possibilities that don't just involve her di like dying in the woods. Right. But fuck Josh for not Shoot. taking care of her. Honestly, I think that that's awful. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty. Just to be like, there was a fire. I don't know what happened. She went to a party. Okay. It seems. It seems like a big. Red flag. Red flag. And I don't know. I surely Kentucky police did some investigation. Investigation with that. But um, like I said, we're going to keep the door open and just hope that we see some good news on the horizon. You never know. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been really, really fun. If you want to see more true crime, let us know down below any cases that you have in mind. I have a small list from back in the day when I used to do true crime all the time. So I have maybe five or six other cases that are like lined up ready to go not researched yet but the idea of them um so yeah if you have any recommendations let us know we'd love to continue researching and talking about true crime it's always a fun time it's awesome. sad for the families but like i said we're just trying to do our little part to make sure that we can bring this to a happy end for as many people as we can Thanks for watching. See you next time.